I first of all want to thank uh, the family and friends of uh, the activists who have been arrested and detained under uh, the Bhima Kuregao conspiracy case for uh, speaking with us and sharing their thoughts. Uh, of course, PUCL for organizing this and reminding all of us that this is an ongoing struggle, not just to have them released, but this is really a struggle for all our freedoms. Uh, uh, Jenny, Sagar, Maisha, uh, in their voice and in their words, uh, one could hear not only affection and care of a family member of Al Murli as a friend, but uh, you, I also heard pride. Ki jo kaam, uh, unke family or dost karte the, usme unko garv hai ki wo kaam unhone hamesha desh, samaj or sabse pishde huye work ke liye unhone wo khade huye hain. Or uh, उनमें से कई लोग मेरे पर्सनल फ्रेंड्स और कॉलीग्स और एक्टिविस्ट फ्रेंड्स रह चुके हैं और हम हम समझते हैं उनकी अपनी फैमिली ने जो बातें बोली हैं इट्स क्वाइट क्लियर दैट व्हाट इज द रीजन फॉर देयर अरेस्ट और द लेटर ऑफ अदर द राइटिंग ऑफ गौतम दैट वाज रेड आउट बाय कविता दैट दे रियली आर रिमूविंग द मोस्ट क्रिटिकल वॉइसेस इन इंडिया व्हिच वुड शेप थॉट एंड ओपिनियन uh, just to go back very quickly, the facts are, of course, very well known uh, uh, to most people here. Elgar Parishad ka jo um, ek function hua, ek program hua, jo do judges ne organize kiya, kuch uh, uh, logo ke saath, activists, sangatano ke saath milke. Uh, usme samvidhan ki taraf jo resolve tha, it was reaffirmed. Uh, and I want to constantly uh, keep, uh, keep ask us and request us all to please think about what is happening in also the Delhi riots cases. It's been referred to by earlier speakers too. And I think we need to, in order to analyze and understand uh, the nature of state and law, it's important to see these two uh, constantly together. Elgar Parishad ke 31 December 2000, Satra uh, K program ke baad, there was violence after uh, uh, around the 2nd of January. What we see coming out thereafter is arrests in June 2018 and arrests in August 2018. And then the process of arrest continues right up till the recent arrest of Professor Hani Babu. What is, uh, what is interesting and important here to note is that the August 2018 arrestees who uh, I represented uh, in the petition of Romila Thapur and others, and we challenged what? We challenged saying that what the police is putting out as material on the basis of which they are to be arrested under uh, serious provisions of the IPC as well as the UAPA, these are letters, alleged letters, allegedly found in the device of uh, one of the arrestees of June. What did we ask the Supreme Court for? We simply said, we want an independent, impartial investigation. Hamara ye case kabhi bhi nahi tha, ki aap hume investigate nahi kar sakte, ki we are above investigation, hamare upar koi sawal nahi uch sakte. Hamne ka independent, impartial, special investigation team monitored by the Supreme Court or any other court is what the prayer was. By a judgment of two is to one, where the majority dismissed our prayer. However, I want to read out from what was said by the minority judgment of Justice Chandrachu. And he, he said very uh, importantly that the lofty edicts and judicial pronouncements can have no meaning to a citizen unless the constitutional quest for human liberty translates into securing justice for individual whose freedom is under threat in specific cases. Those words echo in our ears today. Aad wo quest for liberty ko do saal se upar ho rahe hai. Magar jo investigation hai, usme us samay bhi doubts the, jo ek Supreme Court ke judge ko bhi prima facie laga ki nahi, yahaan kuch garbar hai, is ke liye ek alag mechanism hona chahiye, aur wo ek right hai. Not only of the people who have been arrested and detained, but of all of society to be convinced that the, uh, what is happening is fair and just. The court also said there 
that it is a constitutional duty to ensure that the investigation carried out by an SIT so that justice is not compromised. These were the words of Justice Chandrachur being a minority judgment. Of course, usko kuch asar uska nahi hua. Bohat baar hume ek vakya sunai patta hai, jo is desh mein aam taur pe bola jata hai. Let law take its own course. Mera manna hai ki law does not take its own course. Sab se pehle to sawal uhta hai, what is the law? What law are we talking about? About the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, jis ki upar ya sedition, jis ki upar baat ke speakers bolenge, jis ko haal hi mein amend kiya gaya hai. Ye jo law take its own course ka ek assumption hai, ki aapka jo investigating system hai, aapka jo political dhacha hai, aur aapka jo court system hai, that will be fair, it will be impartial, and it will not have a prejudice or an opposition or an ideological conflict with those who against whom action is being taken. Here, law will not take its own course, and that is why we are all uh, agitated about what is happening. I want to then next point out uh, about you know, this neutral cartography of the legal system which is a myth that is being sold to us and which I think is a myth that the Bhima Korega conspiracy case completely shatters. It is their own case. Ki kuch chithiya hai. Unka apna case ye hai. Ki no ne kuch kiya nahi hai. Kuch chithi hai jo kisi ke device mein hai jis par koi signature nahi hai, koi naam hai. Kuch chithiyo mein kuch likha hai. Wo chithiya sahi hai, galat hai, kis ne likhi fabrication hai. All that remains to be tested. And yet, these people against whom there is no allegation of violence having been committed by them remain in custody for over two years. What is the jurisprudence that is being developed here? And I want to now quickly move to talking about the nature of the state and the nature of the law. And when I say law, I mean the legal system including the law, but I will not speak specifically about the law. Let us look at what is happening here. And I think the Bhima Korega conspiracy case actually underlines it. And the state is a creature of habit. State apne aap ko khud mimik karta hai. Apne tarike bana kar. Aur jo state par hai, wo sirap ye nahi hai. Ki aaj sudha ya varvar rao ya gautam ye log bang hai itne time se ya gardling jaysay vakil jo khade hote hai. For the, for the most oppressed and vulnerable. Ye hamare pure desh ke citizenship ke terms ko badalne ke liye hai. It is to completely demolish freedom of speech and expression, freedom of assembly, and freedom of association, without which citizenship cannot continue in a constitutional democracy. And why do I say that? And please keep in mind what is happening in Delhi, with respect to the Delhi riots. Dono jage par kya hua? Elgar Parishad ya Shaheen Bagh ya North East Delhi mein protests huye. Kya symbol tha? Samvidhan ka symbol tha. Asking for what? Challenging a majoritarian, divisive Hindutva ideology and reaffirming faith in constitutional values. Peaceful public protests. Who was leading these prominent activists who have fearlessly and courageously challenged the government action repeatedly and challenged the, the attempt to shift the politics of India and the, the, the capture of state apparatus by a politics and an ideology that is not allowed under the constitution. But no use of violence by anyone. What this is, this conspiracy, it's actually a conspiracy against the people of this country and the constitution of this country. The delegitimization of certain kinds of politics by first throwing in public domain terms like anti-national and urban Naxal, which then creep into the law with amendments to the UAPA and into charge sheets, and then start becoming commonplace in courtrooms when arguments are addressed by the state. It is the criminalization of the dissent. It is the demonization of political activity and political thought. 
Let me take a very different example. I was recently representing uh, the president of the JNK Bar High Court Bar Association who had been uh, detained under the Public Safety Act in first in Agra, then in Delhi since August of 2019 and was released only recently after more than 11 months. The Srinagar High Court upheld his detention use saying what? There is no FIR against him for over 10 years. What did they say? His ideology is like a live volcano. This is where we are moving, where ideological thought, which does not compromise with this politics, which is today in power, is sought to be delegitimized and criminalized under this law. And that is the conspiracy case. The second aspect is the conspiracy law itself. This law has become particularly criminal law and UAPA and the device of conspiracy has become a weapon of choice of from the arsenal that the state has. It is using law as an instrument, not of enabling, not of giving rights to people, but actually silencing any kind of dissent and thereafter of ensuring that the, the message that goes out is one of fear where each one of us almost censors our thought, forget articulating them. And the parallels between what is happening, what happened in Bhima Koregao and is happening now are striking. All we had asked for was an independent investigating agency. If there is, if there is evidence, why did the state oppose it? And the minute there is a change in political regime, the state itself changes the, the investigating agency because now the state's control over that lot of the, the investigators is loosened with the change in, uh, in the elected government. All that this leads one is to ask more and more questions. And activists whose scholarship, whose activism, whose lawyering has spoken out in terms of the constitution, in terms of enhancing and taking forward the rights of people. What jurisprudence allows of this Supreme, of our Supreme Court, how does the law allow them to be held in custody when there is their, it is their own case that there is no threat of violence except to use the device of conspiracy. I think we need to go back to the fundamentals. We need to, we need to challenge the fundamentals of the manner in which anti-terror laws are crafted today to actually silence and demolish basic freedoms and rights which the state did not gift us, which we will hold and we will exercise as our citizenship rights. And what we do see is that those who are exercising violence, who are using hate speech, they are not being arrested, they are not being investigated, there is no action taken against them. And therefore, uh, friends, I will only end by saying that I think we can no longer uh, sit quiet and expect that the law is some neutral agent which is going to, uh, uh, on its own, uh, bring us to the path, to, to the uh, door of justice. I think we must raise our voices. We must question. This silencing is not of 10, 12, or 14 people. It is meant to silence our rights under the Constitution and actually the conspiracy is against all of us to take away our rights.